And Beth, I think when you're ready, we can turn your video on if you're comfortable. There you go. Thank you. So in three minutes, I'll press start webinar and begin recording. Okay. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we should be starting. And um, I just want to welcome you to this uh, edition of the Evidence to Action uh, webinars. I'm Dr. Christopher Makwindi, the Technical Director for ECPAF Eswatini. I'll be your moderator for this uh, session. And uh, thanks uh, for taking time off your busy schedule to join this uh, webinar. Our topic for the day is um, leveraging the PEFA platform to expand and uh, integrate FP services in the global response to HIV and AIDS. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, we continue to note a uh, substantial unmet uh, need for family planning and uh, low levels of um, lack use. The modern contraceptive uh, prevalence has uh, remained at around 20% uh, from 2019 to 2021. And this could be attributed to the impact of the three Cs, uh, namely uh, COVID-19, climate change, and um, uh, conflict in some regions. Uh, family planning and met need for all women is uh, stagnated around uh, uh, 20% again uh, from 2012 to 2021. And uh, among women living with HIV uh, in the sub Saharan Africa, 66 to 92% uh, have reported unmet need for family planning, with only 20 to 43% reporting uh, contraceptive use. 49 to 79% of uh, pregnant women on art have also uh, reported that um, their current pregnancy was unintended. And um, in Eswatini, uh, two assessments were conducted uh, between 2012 and 2019 that showed an unmet need um, among erratic clients of uh, 65% and 25% respectively. And uh, we do have uh, evidence um, globally showing that uh, integration of family planning and HIV services improves uh, both SRH and uh, HIV outcomes. Additionally, um, we know that uh, FP ART integration remains one of the key pillars in uh, preventing um, unintended pregnancies among women living with uh, HIV. In most of the Sub-Saharan Africa, notably, uh, we uh, have seen a favorable policy environment for family planning era to integration. And uh, also we do have a good evidence base for integration of services. And uh, also of note is that uh, we do have uh, guidance documents, tools um, that can support integrated uh, programming. Um, we we, we, we need, uh, in our discussion, we need to come up with um, flexible approaches uh, that can be grounded in evidence, um, uh, that can be tailored to the local context. Uh, and uh, we are going to um, have uh, different approaches, innovation or strategies that can be uh, scaled up or implemented in uh, different countries. So uh, when you look at our, um, uh, a panel, we do have um, uh, um, uh, three uh, doctors. The first one is uh, Anna Temba, uh, who is a technical director for Engender Health in Tanzania. She's a medical doctor and public health specialist with over 10 years of uh, practical experience as a clinician, program manager, and um, technical advisor in the areas of uh, MNCH, family planning, um, um, uh, post abortion care, HIV, and AIDS. And uh, we also have uh, Dr. Kikanda Kindandi, uh, who is an associate director for clinical services for ECPAF Eswatini under the Aspire project. He's a medical doctor with um, uh, postgraduate qualifications in uh, health economics and uh, business administration. He also comes with a wealth of experience in uh, HIV and uh, TB clinical management. Uh, and last but not least, we do have um, Moses Odot. Uh, Dr. Moses is a senior MNCH advisor at uh, Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric um, 
Aid Foundation for the um, uh, regional health integration to enhance services in southwestern Uganda. He has uh, more than 10 years experience and uh, he has worked in family planning and uh, has been dedicated to RMNCH and uh, other areas. And uh, as you can see there, we do have uh, an impressive panel. But uh, before we get into the call, just some uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, first, firstly, the interpre interpretation is uh, available in American Sign Language, French, Portuguese, and uh, Swahili. And um, there are uh, details on how to use uh, this feature. And I will also post in the um, uh, uh, chat box uh, uh, further instructions. And uh, of note, we we'll also not um, show our videos uh, just to uh, save some bandwidth uh, for the discussions. And uh, uh, please note that um, the, this uh, E2A is being recorded. And um, Ekpaf will share the recording at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you have uh, any questions and comments, uh, please share them or submit through the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, or you can use the chat box and I will come to those questions at the end of uh, the presentation. So without uh, further ado, I will introduce um, uh, the first speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Anna Temba. Uh, to take us through a presentation. Over to you, Dr. Anna. Thanks, Chris. Hi, everyone. And welcome to this presentation where I will share with you lessons from USAID Borussia Afia Northern Central and USAID Afia Yangu Northern on how we are leveraging the PEPA platform to scale family planning services. So if I, be, I give a bit of a background of, of the Tanzanian context where we have around 1.7 million people living with HIV and of those 84% know their HIV status and 82% are accessing treatment. And as we can see, this is way below the UNAIDS target of 1990-1990. And the contraceptive prevalence rate is low at around 32% and unmet need for contraception is high at around 32 to 24%. The TB case notification is low at around 49%, and 44% of women have ever experienced sexual or physical violence. And as a country, we also constrained on our human resource for health with shortage around 52%. And again, if I give also a bit of a, um, an overview of the two programs, so USAID Borussia Africa Northern um, was funded by USAID, um, primed by EPAF. And the sub was in gender health, um, overseeing family planning, gender, youth, and social inclusion. The program started in 2016 and ended last year in 2021. And the current program is USAID Afiangu Northern, um, which is also funded by USAID, primed by EDPAF, and subs are in gender health, um, providing oversight on family planning, gender, youth, and social inclusion. There is also AMREF, um, overseeing community engagement and social and behavioral change. DT International on Digital Health and Matchboxology on Human Centered Design. This program started last year, November in 2021, and will go up to 2026. And I also just want to highlight um, within the USA funding, um, paper funding was uh, above 90%. And um, on the project um, geographical coverage, so we have five regions which are funded by PEFA on HIV. Those are Arusha, Dodoma, Kilimanjaro, Manyara, and Singida. Six regions are receiving TV funds. Um, Arusha, Dodoma, Kilimanjaro, Manyara, Singida, and Tabora. Family planning funds in three regions, Arusha, Dodoma, and Manyara. Although in all the five regions supported by PEFA, we are also supporting family planning HIV integration. And we also have COVID funds for five regions of Arusha, Dodoma, Kilimanjaro, Manyara, and Singida as highlighted in the map. Um, and the USAID Afiangu Northern, which is the current program, um, has three results area. The results area one on improving access to quality plant-centered HIV and TB services. Results area two on improved ability of individuals to practice 
positive health seeking behavior and results area three on enabling environment for quality HIV TB service provision. So if I take you on the how we are um, using and leveraging the paper platform to expand family planning services, we are doing this in like three different ways. So the first way is by integrating family planning in HIV services. And we do this by ensuring provision of routine family planning services at HIV care and treatment centers. And we uh, achieve this by training providers to provide family planning services. We ensure co-allocation of family planning commodities to CTC. When we ensure use um, of health management information system, these are government tools for documentation to also be available at the CTCs. And um, we ensure availability of medical equipment and supply to support the provision of services. And we also conduct family planning special days outreach at these care and treatment centers, particularly in those sites with high client volume and um, where providers might be overstretched to provide um, integrated care, um, including family planning. So we conduct family planning and um, service days outreach. And we also integrate family planning and reproductive health services into the teen clubs for adolescents living with HIV to expand reach and access of family planning to um, adolescents. And then we also integrate family planning in the PMTCT services, the prevention of mother to child transmission, as well as um, during cervical cancer screening of um, HIV positive women. And we also integrate HIV in family planning services by ensuring um, clients are also able to access provide initiated counseling and testing for HIV in family planning and um, generally in the RSH services. And we also conduct the integrated HIV, TB and GBV um, screening during family planning outreach to also ensure that um, clients are also receiving um, comprehensive integrated care. And also we also ensure uh, family planning integration with other services. So in the routine provision of family planning service, at RSCH, we also support provider to provide integrated care routinely. And we also integrate family planning into the labor and delivery unit through immediate postpartum family planning. And we also integrate family planning in outreach through in immunization, through our family planning immunization outreach models. And so what are our results um, with this intervention? So if we look at the two programs with USAID, Borussia Aftia, um, Northern, we were able to reach over 6 million people with family planning services. And USAID after young, for this one year, we were able to reach nearly one, 1 million people. And we know that um, young people are a priority population to be reached with reproductive services, including um, family planning. And with USAID, Borussia Afia, we were able to reach 1.6 million young people. And for this year alone, for USAID, Afia Young, we were able to reach 200, over 200,000 um, young people. Um, integrated outreach is our key model to reach the hard to reach populations and facilities, um, which are also constrained with human resource. And through our integrated outreach in Borussia Afia program, we were able to reach nearly 900,000 um, women with um, family planning services. And for this year alone in QSAD of Yayang, we were able to reach 100,000 um, clients with family planning services through different um, outreach models, as you can see, the integrated family planning outreach, the family planning service days outreach, and family planning immunization outreach. And if we look at the method mix, we see through this approach, we're able to, um, clients are able to access varied um, range of uh, methods, although implant remains a main uh, method of choice. Um, postpartum family planning services, where we are integrating family planning services in the labor and delivery rooms. Um, when the USAID Borussia Afia program started, uh, it was, we were reaching around 9% of women delivering with postpartum family planning. But as we close the year five, we reached around 51% of those, of women delivering um, at health facilities. And um, USAID after a program picked up from there to 57% in Q1. And as we closed Q4, we were at around 72%. And if you look at family planning um, services provided at CTC, we can see 71% of the CTCs have integrated family planning services. 
seeing around 30,000 um, clients per year. And the graph on the right shows the, um, the method mix for the non-condom um, family planning methods. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we provide integrated family planning outreach where we're also integrating other services. And through um, USAID after Yangu program for this one year, we were able to support a, um, identification of 14 um, presumptive TB cases, um, with 64% of those being linked to care. We were also able to identify 13 um, HIV positive clients who were also linked to care. And you know, during also family planning services, we we're also able to integrate cervical cancer screening. And we identified 46 via positive and who are received same day treatment, 57% of those, and 22% were linked to care. We also integrate GBV screening, and through that screening, we were able to identify over 3,000 GBV cases. And of those, 83% had previously um, experienced either physical or emotional violence. 17% of those were had experienced sexual violence. And some were able to receive care in the same setting, and some had to be linked to care, 7% of those. So what have we learned and how, how, what are our recommendations through this learning? So first, um, we've learned that the integrated um, services provide more opportunities for comprehensive client-centered care. And again, we've also learned that service integration is key for resource optimization and sustainability. For example, we have integrated HIV screening and testing, as you have, you have seen um, in the established RSH platforms. And um, we've also uh, integrated family planning services in HIV services. And then and another lesson that we have learned is, you know, um, if the integrated services are built from the design phase, it's not something that comes up during implementation or by the way. If it's really designed from the design phase that, you know, these are the opportunities for integration and this is what we do. We feel like there are more opportunities for coordination and leverage. You can identify early on areas of leverage. And again, it's also important to train provider in delivery of multiple services as a key for success. First, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we are human resource constrained. So if you are able to you properly use the human resource that you have by providing multiple services, it's an optimum way of using that, both financial and human resource. Again, we're also maintaining the privacy and confidentiality because the client does not have to go through multiple providers for multiple care. So one provider can see that client and um, provide all, almost everything that the client needs. But again, it also reduces stigma. As we are aware, this is also one of the problems for um, clients living with HIV. And again, if you're also again, moving these clients, you have to identify and explain over and over. That's also a risk um, for stigma. So with integrated care, we are also able to address that. Thank you. Back to you, Chris. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Anna. And uh, those uh, with uh, questions, keep them coming in our Q&A. We'll address them at the end of um, uh, the session. And uh, on that point, I'll then um, call upon Dr. Kikanda Kindandi from um, Eswatini to um, uh, share with us his um, uh, presentation. Dr. Kindandi, over to you. And uh, Dr. Anna, if you can um, uh, stop uh, sharing. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chris. Uh, please confirm if you can see my slide. Yes, I can see your slides. Please go ahead. Kikonda, would you please put them in presentation mode as well? Thank you. Yes, this is what I'm trying to do. And I think I hope I am successful. Is it good on your side, Nick? Nicola? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Uh, good uh, morning or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Dr. Kikanda Kindandi from Eswatini um, within the Aspire project. I'm going to share with you <clears throat> some of the, the work that we have been uh, uh, doing uh, 
uh, within our community out outreaches, um, which essentially were aiming at looking at how to integrate, integrate family family planning uh, within a community distribution uh, point. So that's how the outline will be looking like. Uh, I'll first. I'll first talk about family planning and art integration within the community distribution point when it comes to uh, the guidance that we have uh, uh, at national level. Then I will share with you um, a summary of, on how the service delivery looked like and how the services are being provided uh, within the uh, outreach uh, service point. And a um, few data, not that much, but I think enough for us to have a feel on how uh, uh, this is looking like and and uh, a bit of uh, uh, a gap and the remedial that as a program we are planning to put in place so that we can uh, show better results. So the family planning and ART integration in general um, is currently guided by a national document which uh, are um, under the leadership of uh, the Minister of Health, where we basically have uh, a, a well-documented agenda uh, uh, right now. Uh, what is good about that is uh, the whole agenda is uh, not only piloted by MOH, uh, uh, Sexual Reproductive Health Unit, but we also have a, a, a well-identified focal person who, who sits within the ministry and, and who is responsible for that. There is a family planning and condom this, uh, 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 technical working group and task team, uh, which provide technical assistance to Minister of Health in terms of um, general family planning and condom distribution uh, activities. And they have also embraced uh, the whole concept of family planning and ART uh, integration. Our 2015 Swaziland uh, National Family Planning Service Guideline has a chapter on family planning integration in HIV services. And uh, uh, there was a, 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 um, there's a revision that is, um, is being uh, uh, done, uh, started in 2021, uh, with as a result, a draft guideline that I will be uh, uh, soon uh, released. But in addition to that, there's a national policy guideline for DSD models of ART service delivery. And which also, though it, it guides the whole provision of DSD models uh, uh, within ART services, but it also provides for uh, uh, family planning integration into DSD model. And uh, uh, the Minister of Health then uh, developed an MNCH DSD SOPs uh, that was supposed to guide a step-by-step provision of family planning in all DST models that uh, Eswatini decided to implement. These DST models are basically your mother baby per club, your postnatal club, your pregnant and lactating women high viral load um, clinic, pregnant and lactating teen clubs, and mobile out, out at DSD outreach. All these uh, models have actually a component where family planning is well uh, highlighted in terms of how it should be uh, implemented. Now, when you look at uh, family planning and ART integration now within the context of community commodity distribution points, uh, which we sometimes refer also as uh, uh, our, our outreach uh, um, uh, uh, distribution uh, point, uh, what we should say is that community distribution points are offering truly an opportunity to integrate family planning services for women on ART with the anticipated outcome of preventing pregnancy among HIV positive women on ART as per the PMTCT prong two. So this model is actually riding on what was already implemented within the DSD framework, which is the mobile ART DSD outreach. So what SRH said, uh, let's leverage uh, this uh, mobile outreach uh, service delivery uh, strategy and add or integrate family planning community distribution uh, uh, and the initiation during these ART refills. So 
the commodities that were uh, uh, identified to be uh, possibly uh, distributed and provided during this family plan, uh, the, during this uh, RTSD outreach, where your combined oral contraceptives, injectable contraceptives, and possibly implant. How does it happen? Um, generally, client recruitment in terms of who should be provided family planning uh, happens at facility level because. Um, uh, a patient that will be refilled in a community distribution point is essentially a patient who belongs to a facility, either a clinic or a health center. And um, that patient will be now identified to be um, proposed a, a nearby service delivery point, which is clo uh, uh, close to his, his place of residence, which may be a school, maybe a church, uh, any any identified or ident identifiable uh, a place where people can easily uh, 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 locate. So when patients are then um, identified as a potential um, uh, um, uh, patient to be refilled in a community distribution point, these patients are also uh, engaged in terms of them being. Uh, on family planning or in terms of them being ready to accept to be uh, uh, provided family planning services during the outreach refill. And clients are then uh, enrolled in, and this is documented in their chronic file and in a two choir register uh, to help the outreach team now to establish a list of patients that they will be uh, providing services in the community and also to quantify uh, the family planning commodities that they should carry when they are going to the outreach. Uh, for clients, not on any family planning method, demand creation is done um, uh, uh, preferably over the phone before the day of the refill. Um, but what is also true is that further recruitment is also done during the community distribution client, uh, 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 community distribution day for clients that were not rich or clients who were not convinced over the phone. So during the day of the, the, the outreach, uh, the expert client will flag out files of clients who are currently on family planning and those who have accepted enrollment. Then the outreach nurse will provide the preferred family planning method in a private space as much it can be accommodated. For outreach sites with no permanent infrastructure of any privacy, uh, the gazebos are actually used to ensure uh, privacy. Clients that refuse family planning service at the uh, EC station are then escalated to the nurse for further uh, counseling. And documentation is done in the chronic care file, which uh, the, 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 the outreach team brings from the facility, so that this data now is um, uh, uh, uploaded on CMIS, our, our, our national um, a, a medical record electronic system, uh, um, uh, which is then updated when the outreach team is back to the facility. Now, in terms of data, uh, let me just say that in summary, out of the 65 supported sites that we, we have, uh, uh, we have six that are not providing family planning uh, activity generally. And these are three correctionals uh, facilities, and also three Catholic church-owned uh, uh, clinics, um, which gives you a total of 59 uh, sites which uh, are implementing um, uh, family planning uh, or providing family planning uh, for ART or patient refilling ART. And um, we then have uh, 31 sites among the, the whole 65 uh, sites that uh, uh, we are supporting, who then have um, community distribution point where uh, family planning is integrated. I will get back to that on the second slide, but for now, we can just appreciate that, uh, as I said, uh, out of the 65 sites we have, 59 are providing, uh, are integrating family planning, 
and 39% in Hoho, which is 66%, and 34% in Shiselweni. Then generally among uh, all our patients who are on, uh, uh, who, who are on ART, uh, I'm calling your attention to the, to the data that is on the left side. This is the total number of women living with HIV uh, who are on ART um, within our 65 supported facility. And we have 16% of them who are on any family planning method. And that's just a disaggregation in terms of age. And I'm calling your attention to see that our uh, adolescent and young women uh, are like uh, coming up with 9% and 21% in terms of coverage, which is uh, things that uh, we are looking at and are working toward uh, improving. And when it comes to the uptake of specific uh, commodities, uh, you'll appreciate that most of our patients, more than uh, 57, uh, more than 50 percent, around 60, are on injectable contraceptive, and seven are on implant, and one percent on intrauterine device. Just uh, giving you a bit of an idea on uh, how how much is the proportion of those who are on uh, long-acting uh, reversible contraceptive. Then, when you bring it down, really now to CCDs alone. As I was mentioning, we have 48 sites that are supporting community outreaches, which is 73% of all our supported sites. And out of these 48 sites, uh, 31 are, have family planning that are integrated into their community distribution point, which is 65%. But uh, currently, uh, most of them are receiving uh, combined oral contraceptive and injectable uh, contraceptive. Now, calling your attention again to um, what is on the left, on the right side. Uh, on the, the left side, you have essentially a family planning uptake um, for all the patients that are refilling in our 31 supported sites that have a community distribution point. And on the right side, what I'm showing you is actually the number of those who are refilling or who are receiving family planning within uh, their uh, community outreach. On the left side, it's women getting generally family planning uh, commodities within the 31 sites that uh, uh, have uh, um, an outreach, a community outreach, and on the right side, women who are receiving family planning within the, the community uh, uh, outreach. So this is how it looks like. So focusing on the community distribution point. So it's essentially say that out of all these uh, 18,582 women who are receiving CCDs, oh, sorry, who are receiving family planning in the 31 sites uh, that are of interest here, 17% uh, of them, which is 30863, are receiving it within a community distribution point. The remaining, like your 73%, are receiving it in the facility. And the coverage is now translating into 17% coverage, meaning that out of all women who are receiving ART within a community distribution point, uh, only 17% are on the family planning method. Uh, Dr. Gaps, Dundee, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we should just um, move over to Moses shortly. Okay, thank you very much. So basically I'll just go to the last slide, which are lesson learned and recommendation. To say, we uh, can say that provision of family planning within CCD have shown to be very much acceptable among recipients of care and implementation site. And integration with other services such as the cervical cancer screening uh, has definitely a potential to improve uptake and ensure that resources are efficiently used. We think that there is a need to develop capacity for implant uh, and uh, uh, intrauterine device insertion 
which we believe will improve coverage of lack within the community outreaches, which is lacking for now. And there is a, a, an investment that needs to be done to improve documentation of family planning activities um, as implemented in the community uh, site to ensure availability of uh, good data for better programming and also for service quality improvement. So this was my last slide. I thank you very much. Over to you, Nicholas. <clears throat> Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Kindandi. Um, may you please uh, stop sharing your slides so that I will move to the next uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Moses Odot uh, from Uganda. Okay, I um, hope my first screen is okay. I'll try to use less than 10 minutes, because I see we're running out of time. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever we are. I'm going to talk um, <coughs> briefly about one of the things that we were doing at uh, Egg Path. Um, my name is Moses. I, work as, <coughs> I worked previously as the family planning advisor, I'm currently as the senior advisor for MNZH. So kind of doing everything. <clears throat> we implement dreams under the we implemented dreams under the USID Right Southwest program and the regional health integration to health services. And we cover you know a, a broad range of, 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 of technical areas and in 2020, we started implementing um, DREAMS. Um, DREAMS stands for Determined, Resilient, and Empowered, AIDS Free, Mentored, and Self. Um, it's an initiative by USAID that aimed at reducing um, the HIV prevalence by 40% among adolescent girls and young women um, currently are doing it in about 16 sub counties in one of the localities in the southwestern region of Uganda. Bit of background, um, these are national data from the UDHS. Um, Uganda currently has a contraceptive prevalence rate of 35%. Uh, an unmet need for family planning at 28. Um, the age of sexual debut stands at 16.9. Um, this is for the uh, females. And the average age of marriage is 18.7. And the teenage pregnancy rate as of the last UDHS was 25. Um, this year, we hope to have the new one out. We think there has been a decrease. And the HIV prevalence for the locality where we implement was at 13.1% for the UN AIDS data. Um, so you could see that these factors really expose the young uh, adolescent girls and young women into a lot of you know, risk. Um, one of the things to note about the DREAMS program is that it focuses on on, on, on primarily it was an HIV program focused on reducing the prevalence among adolescent girls and young women to by 50%, by 40%. And we enrolled the girls aged 10 up to 24 and their age appropriate service packages that are given. And there's a criteria for having all of them you know, enrolled into the DREAMS program. Um, he, things like history of multiple sexual partners, STIs, transactional sex, um, uh, se sexual and gender-based violence, and all that alcohol and substance abuse, it's cascaded as per the age group. So when the DREAMS program started, we found that family planning uptake among that age group was extremely low, actually it was non-existent. Um, and so we, 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 we tried to find out why. Uh, the DREAMS program, in addition to the 16 sub counties that were being implemented in, um, had uh, what we call 
uh, model self spaces, self spaces are where these girls can go and open up and get the services. Um, that includes uh, counseling and skills and economic empowering and all that stuff. But one of the things that was uh, evidently there yeah, was the access to uh, reproductive health and more especially family planning services were well, no? And so we found that there were no adequate human resources to provide family planning and there was lack of information and the commodities were not present. Um, we actually didn't even have rooms um, to provide this. And we had now communities we live have a lot of myths and misconceptions regarding family planning. And so we had a planning process of training dreams peers. And these are not really healthcare providers, but they're just girls who are, you know, facilitating the dreams mechanisms, giving IEC materials, um, getting commodities into the safe spaces. Yeah. And so despite all that, um, we're at zero. And so we needed to have a robust effort to drive up the family planning uptake. So we identified space at the model safe spaces which had been designated for family planning, placed joint orders, uh, mentored dreams peers. And we documented the uptake of family planning. The picture to your right shows um, uh, one section of a room in the safe space. You can see the condoms up, there were a bit of implants, uh, not implants, uh, can't see it fully, but we had um, Depo Provera, we had the DMPS acute, that's Ayana, and all the others uh, within that area and the bed that for, for, for the clients. What did we observe? Um, during the first COP year of COP21, um, sorry, COP20, um, our counseling numbers went up, most especially in the age bracket nine to 14. But then we, um, we've also seen at the same time the uptake really rose from zero at the start to about 330 girls um, taking up family planning methods and most of these are short term 76% are uh, basically short term methods. Um, then, and if you see um, <coughs> information counseling was mainly given to nine to 14 years because they were the majority, then the 15 to 19 years, and then the 20 to 24. Um, then in terms of receiving, we've seen fairly constant uh, numbers of for girls receiving family planning methods um, from last year to this year, though aggregated data should actually be able to show um, a much higher uptake this year because um, these were financial years, they run from June up to May. Sorry, June up to, from, from July up to June. Um, when so far the learnings that we've had were that um, adolescent girls and young women in sexual relationships are greatly influenced by their partners when it comes to taking up family planning methods. We actually did a national RSEA and when we tried to filter out that age group, we found um, that. And we also realized that we could not give all methods at the safe spaces. Um, and then there were many of the older adolescent girls and young women are more interested in economic empowerment, um, learning tailoring, baking, cooking, all those other things other than family planning. We also learned that having short-term methods available and easily administered by safe space staff uh, improves uptake of family planning. And we also, um, well, learned that family planning commodity security is key to successful uptake. So the way forward, some of us is that we want to continue to engage with local governments to, 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 to provide commodities to these self spaces. And also having some of these methods available at the self space should be carried on to the next phase of the DREAMS program. Maybe at this point, I should state that the DREAMS program has actually been transitioned 
to a local partner, so it's not like under our jurisdiction, but nevertheless, we still um, provide technical assistance um, as, as right southwest to the local entity that is taking up this method. And then, of course, we, we've also given uh, technical assistance in getting a spousal community approach um, to address um, the issue of, 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 of male involvement or partners um, being involved in, a, in being empowered to help their spouses make decisions regarding uptake of family plan. Um, so basically, this is something that is new. Um, the whole idea of getting family planning methods into a safe space. Uh, prior to that, we had been doing more of getting, um, referring them out. So, of course, when some of these commodities that were distributed in the communities and all that led to a significantly high uptake of, led to a significantly high uptake of family planning, um, among adolescent girls in the community safe spaces. We have actually for this year alone, we have about 20,000 girls taking up um, family planning as a, 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 as new users within the communities that we support. But because this data is also intertwined with the national data, um, it's, 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 we couldn't break it down. Um, someone asked what an RSE is, RSE is root cause analysis. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I beg to stop there. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Moses. And um, thanks to all our presenters. Um, these are really uh, great presentations uh, where we are getting, you know, um, uh, what's working well in uh, different projects and uh, different countries. And uh, for Tanzania, we are seeing that um, 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 family planning has been uh, routinely integrated in um, care and treatment centers, as well as uh, other service points. For Eswatini, uh, family planning has been integrated in uh, DSD models, including uh, uh, community outreach for, for HIV. And uh, in Uganda, we are also seeing a package uh, of um, FP uh, as part of the uh, uh, DREAMS uh, package. So um, um, just um, going into our Q&A, we are seeing um, uh, questions. Um, uh, the first ones, I'll just group them for Dr. Anna to uh, respond. The first one, uh, is there a comparison of um, services and uptake in other regions without um, this USAID supported uh, program? Uh, the second question is, um, is HTC offered as a vertical services in Tanzania? Then uh, the third one is uh, asked in French, um, uh, thanks for the presentation. I'd like to know the challenges encountered in the integration. How did you manage to minimize the um, workloads uh, 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 on uh, providers within the framework of uh, HIV activities when you added uh, FP services uh, to them. Then uh, the last uh, question uh, is, um, uh, can you share more efforts on the integration within 10 clubs? Um, uh, Dr. Anna, if you can uh, quickly respond so that uh, we move uh, uh, to the next set of questions. All right, thank you, Chris, and thank you everyone for the question. So we did not do like a formal analysis as comparing what um, this program was able to achieve versus um, other regions not supported. But I just want to highlight, for example, with the USAID Boreshafia program, there were sister programs, both for HIV, TB, and integrating family planning. And those two programs combined, they were able to increase um, the family planning uptake by 56%. So we did not compare, however, just from the experience um, of other implementing other programs and the, and the milestone that we were able to achieve, you know, we could clearly see like the impact the program had. Um, on the question on, regarding the teen um, clubs, so how we are doing the teen clubs? So with the USAID Afiangu Northern, we are supporting 100 teen clubs 
And this team club, the adolescents living with HIV meet every Saturday. And when they meet, they have facilitated sessions and this could be gamified and do, they will be facilitated by the peer. However, um, after they finish the facilitation and they would select a topic for that day and it will vary from um, one Saturday to the other. And after the session, they would actually go and meet a provider who will do the additional like, counseling as well as service provision. And regarding the HTC, so the HIV counseling and testing is integrated in various um, service delivery and uh, entry points. It could be at OPD, it could be at RSH. So it's variated, um, various uh, entry points um, are being offered uh, for HIV counseling and testing. And regarding um, the challenges on how we manage to address the workload. So as I previously mentioned, um, the HIV care and treatment centers um, are varied in terms of workload. So there are some providers who are able to like, you know, combine it in, the, um, in their activities routinely with not a, without, without a big problem. And for some heavy clinics, I mentioned we are doing the service, special service days outreach. And with the special service days outreach, we would have additional provider going to the, uh, to the CTC on the heavy clinic days and they would add, um, would support the workload. And in that way, it offloads um, the additional, the existing staff, and also extend access to family planning services. But you know also, um, just because um, we're able to like, um, to integrate the service does not necessarily mean we're also um, increasing um, their workload or, because if this provider is not going to do actually the service today to this client, they would actually need to see that other, that client on the next day, it's just not on the same scenario, on the same setting. So there was also that like that added value, both the client as well as the provider being able, um, able to provide the service because otherwise they would come back the following day um, um, requiring additional service. Um, I think um, I've answered, and there was also a question on the cost-effective analysis. If we actually did um, the cost-effective analysis, we did not do a formal analysis, like um, formal, research. However, we appreciate that comment and we're going to take that forward. Thanks, Chris. Back to you. Um, thanks, uh, Dr. Anna. For Dr. Kindandi, the SRTNA program, uh, just a, um, a, a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first one is, um, to what extent can we take advantage of the FP HIV integration to also improve um, HIV testing, especially for adolescents? And uh, also, if you can uh, chime in on the uh, challenges that uh, you encountered when you were uh, operationalizing this uh, integration. And um, uh, thirdly, if you can uh, comment on the cost-effective analysis, if you have uh, done any or any data that you may know. Uh, over to you, Dr. Kimben. Thank you very much, Doc. So <clears throat> my first question is to say to what extent uh, one can take advantage of family planning integration to improve testing among, um, among adolescents. Um, of course, when, when you look at what I've presented to you right now, uh, this essentially addresses the issue of uh, family planning within uh, a population that is already on ART, meaning women who are uh, HIV positive already and who are attending a community distribution point to receive their ARVs. And this is why we're coming in to say, why don't we also cover you with additional services, including family planning? But we, if you consider everything within the context of uh, um, family planning, oh, sorry, uh, 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 MNCH, service delivery uh, models within Eswatini, uh, there is an opportunity that the national pro program spotted that can actually uh, address that. Within the uh, elimination of matter to try to trans transmission agenda, uh, the program wanted to, or wants to implement um, what is called uh, the pregnant teen club, uh, which essentially is a service delivery model that will focus on pregnant women uh, who are teenagers. And within that, uh, the debate actually was to say, uh, how will it be a DSD model within ART if we also 
uh, 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 yeah, enroll non-HIV uh, positive pregnant women within that. The program wanted to pursue that, including negative uh, pregnant women, uh, essentially to address the need of uh, having, uh, reducing the incidence of HIV among this population, because our current data shows that we have a high rate of teen pregnancy, and we also have a high rate of recency testing among our adolescents. So it was essentially to say this is a good opportunity for such to be uh, provided uh, uh, um, HIV testing and also uh, prevention measures like, like PrEP. So that's where I see uh, not just family planning as uh, an integration strategy as, as presented here, but um, uh, MNCH within the TST context with a focus on pregnant uh, and lactating teen who are HIV negative, which can actually fill that gap. Challenges when operationalizing integration uh, quickly is to say we, 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 we have two challenges uh, that um, uh, are in the slide. For those who will be able to reach the slide, you can see that. Uh, the first one is actually the um, inability to provide lack generally within the, the, the family planning uh, integration side, uh, the, 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 the ART outreach side, uh, because of the issue of privacy. Most of them, uh, like your injectable, at least you have a place where a woman can be uh, uh, comfortable, uh, uh, like exposing a certain area of, of her body for the injection. So this is where now uh, uh, equipment like gazebos, which we have uh, purchase of our side, mostly for the provision of cervical cancer screening uh, in the community, is coming up now to assist with providing such, especially in a community distribution. Uh, sorry, point sorry Dr. Kendandi. Where you don't have uh, a, a, private, a private space. So these are the issues that we have. Yeah, over to you, Dr. Okay, thanks, uh, Dr. Kendandi. And uh, quickly in the last uh, minute, I just wanted to uh, pose uh, the last questions uh, to um, um, uh, Dr. Moses. Um, the first one is uh, on the MNA. How did you set up the data collection tools for family planning? Did you create standalone or you incorporated into the uh, existing HIV tools? Um, I I'll let you go ahead, uh, Dr. Moses, and uh, respond to that. Um, we are cognizant of time. We should be stopping by the top of the hour. Okay, um, there are separate tools in the DREAMS program that captures that, um, but that data is also reported through the facilities into the national DHIS through system. Yes, but there are separate tools and registers that we use um, for the DREAMS program. Um, thanks, thanks uh, Dr. Moses, and uh, thanks to all our panelists. Uh, we appreciate your time and uh, presentations and uh, also looking from uh, the presentations uh, we are seeing you know that uh, it's um, uh, you know it's beneficial you know to the to the client when we integrate services but of course this come with um, challenges that uh, we need to uh, work and uh, the mediator on and um, also just to um, uh, thank you know all, everyone uh, for your precious time and our uh, participation in this uh, call. Uh, we have come to the end of um, our, our webinar, and I uh, definitely will share the, uh, the, the presentations. And uh, as indicated uh, earlier, this was being broadcasted uh, live. Um, uh, thank you so much, and uh, you have a wonderful day.